Hi everyone, it's Karen here with 10 techniques using Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Inks and Natalie Kalba Elephant Stamp Set. Enjoy! This end studio stamp set comes with one Stampendous stamp, one Art Foamies Elephant Stamp, and one stencil designed by Natalie. The Art Foamy stamp that I'm using right now it's really handy and stamps really beautifully. For the first elephant, I simply used the ink pads and inked this elephant in different areas in different colors and stamped on the paper. I used cracked pistachio, fossilized amber, and broken china. I wanted to use the same stamp for all the techniques so you can see the difference between the techniques. The list of all the materials, including the stamps and the oxide inks, are listed below in the description area. The second technique is very similar to the first. I used the same three ink pads and inked around the elephant and then stamped it. The cool thing about this ink pads is that they have both pigment ink and both dye ink. The dye ink reacts with water while the pigment ink gives a really good stamping impression. Once I finished stamping my image, I took some sp a spray bottle and just sprayed the elephant all around and then wiped it with a paper towel. The place where it was sprayed on and wiped, it became much lighter, almost like a watermark while the other areas stayed still the same color as their original stamping. What I really like about this is that it, it creates a kind of watermark effect because some of the ink comes off and some doesn't. For my third elephant and technique, I use the back side of the foamy, art foamy stamp. The nice thing about the stamp set is that the Art Foamy stamp has two sides. One is printed and one is solid. I used three different um, Distress Oxide inks. I used Spice Marmalade, I used Fired Brick, and Worn Lipstick. I inked them onto the elephant stamp and then I stamped it onto my paper. I did it a second time just because I really wanted to have a very colorful and deep impression of the elephant. The nice thing about this stamp is that you can line it up and it's really easy to line up exactly where the stamp was before. Then I took my water sprayer again and I sprayed on the body of the elephant and wiped it with a paper towel. The cool thing is that as you're spraying you can really see how the water is reacting with the ink and forming these bubbles then when you wipe them off the ink comes off onto the paper towel. It gave it a really cool batik effect kind of like a tie-dye. For my fourth technique, I used the same three colors and I covered the whole background of the watercolor paper. Just to make sure that I specify that I'm using uh, watercolor paper for all my backgrounds so it can take the water that I spray on it. I just want to take this moment to apologize for the shakiness of the video. I guess the table was moved and every time I was inking it was shaking the whole table which I guess my table moved positions and I didn't realize it. Once I had covered the whole background, I sprayed the stamp and spread the water all around the stamp and just dabbed it in some areas. Then I took it and stamped over the background to create the stamped image uh, in reverse. 
I love how this negative image came out as the water from the stamp took away the areas where the ink was underneath. Then I took the spray bottle again and just added some splatters on the background and then created some really beautiful splatters around the elephant. My fifth technique, I used the Strex Oxide Wilted Violet and spread it in the background. This ink goes really smoothly onto any background and doesn't create as many marks as the other ones as it is really highly pigmented and a lot of the ink and the color comes onto the paper. However, even if it does have a few marks, I don't mind them because I can manipulate them with water afterwards. For this technique, again, I took the back side of the elephant and sprayed it with water just the way I did with the other one, but I wanted a solid impression so it would remove the purple from inside the background. I made sure I spread the water evenly on the stamp and wiped off any excess and then I stamped onto the purple background and removed the stamp. It was still a little bit too wet so I just dabbed it with a little wipe to take off all the excess of water. Then I took the Stampendous stamp from the set and using some Faded Jeans Distress Oxide ink, I inked it onto the elephant and then just pressed it right in the middle to create texture. I wiped the stamp clean and then I took the cracked pistachio and also inked it onto the stamp and pressed it into the background by lining up the stamp. The nice thing about these inks is that they can be stamped over each other and the colors don't get contaminated when they're mixed. Finally I just sprayed a little bit of water because I really love how it comes out when it's sprayed but this is an optional step that you don't have to do. For the sixth technique I use three colors of the Distress Oxide. I used Wilted Violet, Faded Jean and Cracked Pistachio. I took the Tim Holtz Dabbers and inked them around the stamp in the patterned side. Instead of spraying the water after I stamped the image on the paper, I sprayed it directly on the stamp itself. Then I went and stamped it onto the paper. There was, I think, too much water on the paper and it came out very watery. So I took the stamp again and created another and stamped another image with uh, the stamp. And this time, because the water had already absorbed in the other paper, the stamping image came really nice on the paper. Here is the first stamped image, which I think turned out really cool. And then the second one, which you can see the pattern clearly. For the seventh technique, I took the Wilted Violet and the Spice Marmalade and used the solid side of the stamp. And using the daubers, I inked the whole elephant stamp. Then with the same idea in mind, I used my spray bottle to splatter a few drops onto the stamp. I absorbed the excess with a, with a paper towel and then I stamped it onto the background. Originally I thought that the actual drops would come out in the background, but all it did is just take away the ink from that specific area, but I still think it came out a really cool effect. Then. I did this again, I added the exact same two colors onto the elephant stamp in the solid side. This technique, which is the eighth technique, I did the spraying again, but this time I didn't dab it with 
the paper towel but stamped it immediately on the white watercolor paper and what it did is that it, it was very watery but it created a kind of uh, very cool effect in the background and then I splattered a few drops inside the elephant stamp because it really made it look like a tie-dye for my ninth technique, again I use the solid color of the elephant with the same two colors and apply them onto the stamp. I sprayed them like I initially did and then stamped it, dotted with the paper towel and stamped it onto the background. However, I took this one step forward and I used the cracked pistachio and the faded jean and also inked them onto the elephant side, the solid side, and then sprayed it with water and stamped them over the other image so all the colors would kind of intertwine. What I liked about the inks is that even though I added colors that are not from the same family, like these are more cool colors, it still didn't create um, a mis mishmash of colors, but it, the bottom colors still remained while the other ones were stamped on top. And it created a very cool image with a lot of like a tie-dye effect as well. The tenth technique, which is the final one for this video, is a, a few step technique and I'll guide you step by step through it. Uh, the first thing I did is I took the faded jean oxide, ink oxide and I just uh, covered the whole background. Then again I took the solid side of the elephant and sprayed it with water and distributed the water all over the stamp and then stamped with it in the background. Like in the other techniques, the water helped uh, remove some of the ink right underneath the elephant and create the elephant image in the background. This techniques has quite a few layers as I wanted to show how these inks can be layered on top of each other. The next layer in this technique was adding another color and I used the cracked pistachio to stamp right above the other elephant stamping image. took the spray bottle and created some splatters inside the stamped image. I tried to stay within the image just so I could create this uh, um, tie-dye effect right inside the elephant. Next I did the same thing and added a layer with the fossilized amber oxide ink. I cleaned my stamp and then inked the solid part of the elephant again and then stamped it. This time I decided I will heat set in between um, impressions to see if it makes any difference but it didn't really make a difference when I was uh, combining the colors which was a really good uh, sign for what I wanted to do. 
and again I sprayed with the water inside the elephant and then dabbed it with a wipe to create that tie-dye effect again inside. The next color layer was using Spice Marmalade. this color the same way I did the others which is a stamping and then spraying inside with then creating some splatters what I like about this technique is that when I created the splatters and removed the pigmented ink from inside the elephant it brought the other colors to the surface so I got a tie-dye effect with many different colors I felt like I needed a little bit of a darker color so I took the fired brick uh, oxide ink and I did the same technique with it which I added it to the elephant stamp and then stamped and sprayed the same I had done with the others. The red color was such a contrast between the other colors that it really showed in the other colors in contrast with it and brought them to the surface. I just want to point out the beautiful paper towel that I had after finishing this project which I will definitely use for another project. Thank you so much for watching. For more inspiration, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye!